this video, I'll show you the pages in Reactor, the web based configuration manager for Bluepill. Today, I'll use an RCP Pro, but the software is the same for all Bluepill products. To access Reactor, you simply enter the IP address of the controller and hit Enter. You may be presented with the login screen. If so, enter username admin and password skahoy, all in lowercase letters. And click Sign In. Now you see the home page of Reactor. In the window top is a menu of the five pages we're going to cover Home, Configuration, Simulator, Packages, and Settings. Let's get started. Home This is where you handle most of your setup. In the right side, you add all the third party devices you wish to control. This can be cameras, video switches, and much more. In the left side, you see the panel itself. If you have more panels, either Bluepill or Unisketch, you can add them here. With this, one setup can span multiple panels, allowing them to work together as one. This is also where you choose a configuration for each panel or group of panels. It can be one of our default configurations or your own custom configuration. When using a default configuration, you will often see options such as camera selector, tally forwarding, and routing trigger. They're an easy way to tweak common settings without going to the configuration page. The available options depend on the selected configuration. In the window top, you find Manage Projects. Projects store the entire setup, and you can have as many projects as you want. Here you can create, duplicate, and delete projects, as well as import and export them. Please note, projects are only stored on your panel, so we strongly advise that you do backups by exporting them to a computer. In the very bottom, you can access various settings such as text size and advanced mode. With the ability to add devices, select configurations, and even tweak settings, we expect many customers will mostly use the home page. But you can go far beyond that on the next page Configuration. Here, you can make changes to our default configurations or build your own configurations from scratch. You can edit every single knob and command and even access the underlying JSON code. The configuration page is split into three sections. To the left is the object tree. Here, you see the entire configuration built from the ground up as a tree. It displays all commands living in layers that can include other layers or branch out. This is basically a way to represent both buttons, virtual triggers, variables, and the layer logic that ties it all together. In the middle, we have the controller, a graphic view of the panels. You can zoom in on the panel you work on, and clicking buttons can be used to either select what you want to configure or to simulate the use of the panel. In the same way, you can also use the actual hardware panel to select buttons for editing. To the right, we have the inspector. It displays the details for whatever you have selected. On layers, this would relate to the structure, and on buttons, it would contain the assigned commands. One thing to notice, there is no save button in Reactor. Everything you do is auto-saved and updated on the fly. OK, let's move on to the simulator page. Simulator. Here, you see a graphic view of the panels. When pressing buttons, everything behaves just as if you were operating the actual panel. So, everything works as in real life and commands are being sent to the devices you control. You may think, hmm, that looks like the controller on the configuration page. And yes, it does, and works in the same way. This page just has more space and a cleaner look. 
It also makes it easier to handle four-way buttons, and when right-clicking buttons, you can access extra options such as hold down. The simulator page is useful in multiple ways. One example, you can work from home and still operate a panel in the studio, just by connecting to the blue pill using a VPN connection. Another example, you can actually build configurations with multiple panels without having the real physical panels. When adding panels on the home page, the system will treat them as they exist for real, and you can operate them on the simulator page and control devices with it. This is a great way to build and test configurations in advance. Now, let's look at the next page. Packages. From here, you can install, update or uninstall files in the system. Blue Pill products use a number of files called packages to operate. They can be system applications such as hardware manager, system manager and reactor, or device cores that controls third-party devices as Atom, vMix or Visca cameras. In the upper part of the page, you see the packages that are already installed. You can click each line to start or stop the package or to see its settings. In the settings, you can download logs, reset the package or uninstall it. To the right, you can choose which version to use. And here you'll see if a new version is available if Bluepill has internet access. When enabling Show Pre-releases in the window top, you'll see the very latest pre-release updates. They may have new features, but are not fully tested yet. In the lower part of the page, you'll see all available packages that are not installed. You can install any package from here, but you rarely need to, as device cores are automatically installed when adding a device on the home page. In the very bottom of the page, we find the Upload and Install Package button. This is used to manually install packages when Bluepill does not have internet access. You can download packages in advance from our website, devices.skahoy.com, and then you install them here. OK, let's move on to the final page, Settings. The settings page is used for basic settings and it's arranged in separate sections. First, we see system information, telling us version numbers, serial number and more. Here, you can also update the operating system. Below, we find Ethernet and Wi-Fi network settings. Please note, right now we only advise to use cabled Ethernet for productions, as we see Wi-Fi as too unreliable. Next up, locks. Skahoy support team may ask you to send these for troubleshooting. This ties into the next section, remote support. Skahoy support team may ask you to enable this in order to assist you with configuration or troubleshooting. Advanced mode enables a few advanced settings throughout the user interface. This is typically disabled. Date and time show the current time and allow you to update it if necessary. Cloud is for future use. Finally, we have authentication. Here you can change username and password or disable the login screen altogether if you want simpler access to Reactor. This concludes our tour of the pages in Reactor, and now you know your way around. Please watch our other how-to videos on Reactor setup and configuration. You'll find links to these below. Thank you for watching.